Hello everyone, how are you today? This is Dr. Paramjeet and you're watching Dr. Education. Uh, those who don't know me, I am a consultant physician cardiologist in Yashoda Super Speciality Hospital, Nehru Nagar, Ghaziabad. And this is my channel. Here I make videos about health and healthcare topics. And uh, I give you simplified medical explanations about the most common and whatever topics you ask me about. And there are various medical explanations, various topics covered on my channel and uh, you can go and browse check out the videos whatever topic you want to know about you can check the videos and if you like the videos don't forget to subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon guys today's video is about nipah virus and uh, niv virus nipah virus is is a virus which is found usually in animals especially bats fruit bats nipah virus Cases of Nipah virus have been found uh, in Kerala and uh, many people have been infected and some of them have already died because of the virus. It's very dangerous. So today we are going to discuss about this dangerous virus and we are going to discuss the reason why it is dangerous, the origin of this virus, how it spreads, how it can actually infect somebody you know or yourself. So what are the signs and symptoms of the infection and finally how we can actually treat it. If you want to know about health and have health concerns, then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. You'll be notified about all upcoming videos. The, this virus is basically a very newly found virus and it was recently, it was found in 19th century. The first incidences were found in 1947, 1999 and 1980s. It was initially found in Malaysia and in Malaysia where uh, especially these found these viruses are commonly seen in fruit bats. Bats, a type of bat which who actually eat fruits. These bats have the virus inside their body and they do not get diseased or illness because of the virus. They just carry them as a host and this virus is excreted in every bodily fluid of these bats in the feces in the urine in the sweat in the saliva everything so usually when this bat eats a fruit especially if that fruit is half eaten and that fruit will have the saliva of this infected bat so that saliva will contain virus and if somebody eats those fruits then he might get infected with this virus so that's the first way of getting infected. Now what happened in Malaysia was these infected bats were living around the fruit trees which were above a pig farm. It's very commonly seen there and what happens because of these the fruits which are half eaten by the bats they fell down into the pig farm and the pig eat them. Plus whatever urine feces these bats do into the pig farm they also are potentially infectious so the pigs got this virus from the bats and the pigs they were an intermediate host for this virus and what happened these pigs inside these pigs the virus replicated the virus became more virulent the virus became more virulent the pigs got diseased and then the farmers, the pig farmers who were actually handling these pigs, they can then get infected because of this, uh, by this virus from these pigs. And then they can spread the virus because if a pig is infected, every single bodily fluid of the pig will get, will have the virus. And there is something because what happens the, when the pig gets the illness, the pig starts barking something similar to a dog and it's like a cuff reflex of the pig and that bark that cuff will again spread out the virus in the droplet form and if you are near the farm or if you are handling the pigs touching the pigs or their areas then you can get the virus and humans if infected they again become a host for a virus replication and these viruses 
can actually go inside your body by means of by means of droplet infection by means of unhygienic conditions and human to human spread is also seen because if a human is infected every single bodily fluid saliva uh, urine feces and even sweat they will have the virus so anybody who is in contact with that infected person can potentially get the virus so by these things you can understand that how you can protect yourself i have seen a few instances where people are suggesting to stop eating fruits so it's not like this you don't have to stop eating fruits all you need to do is you have to see that any half eaten fruit or any fruit you eat has been properly washed and sometimes you can peel the fruit and then eat the inside part so obviously a fruit will not get infected if it is not eaten secondly if a person is infected obviously you have to stay away from that person wear gloves if you are handling the person and obviously wear a mask especially if you yourself are infected so how does this virus actually affect you this virus when it goes inside your body has an incubation period of 8 to 10 12 say 14 days that means for 8 to 14 days the virus will just replicate increase in number inside your body and once it increases to a sufficient amount of number you will then start having symptoms some of people some people may not get any symptom at all and others may have a very serious condition like a brain fever or a viral encephalitis sometimes nowadays these virus have been found to cause respiratory failure also so you might have symptoms of short shortness of breath cough you can have a fever you can have stiffness of the neck because of the brain infection you can have headache you can have neurological symptoms like dizziness unconsciousness blurring of vision you can have photophobia dizziness delirium disorientations all these things can happen and usually if the virus has affected your brain and you have started to have all these symptoms especially of the brain symptoms then you might just go into a comatose stage if the virus is acting very fast in less than 24 hours after that so it's a very dangerous virus so you have to protect yourself there is a 60% chance if you are infected with the virus that you will be landing up in a coma and there is 25% chance that you will have a seizure you will have a convulsion consider if you didn't have such serious conditions then still the virus uh, even after proper treatment or even after the course of the virus the virus can have relapsing infections relapsing encephalitis that means your brain fever can come again after a few months or even after a few years so this virus doesn't go away that easily so the question comes how do you detect the virus this is basically an rna virus and rna viruses or any viruses for that matter they produce antibodies once they go inside the body so we can actually detect these antibodies present in the body by a test called elisa that's a method by a test called igg and igm antibodies initially the body produces igm antibodies and then after a while after a few weeks it starts producing after a few weeks it starts producing igg antibodies so if you have igm antibodies present for this virus that means you have a recent infection and if you have igg antibodies that means it was a past infection now you are you might be okay or you might be having serious disease the virus can also be isolated from any bodily fluid of the patient including cerebrospinal fluid the blood urine or even sweat or even uh, respiratory secretions can it can be isolated by pcr studies also so various tests so these tests are available to confirm whether or not you have the viral infection but beware there is no specific treatment for this virus as present all we can do is we give symptomatic relief and we do symptomatic treatment if the virus is affecting your respiratory system we give you support on that if the virus is causing seizure we give you medications to control that we give you supportive treatment and we wait for the virus your we wait for your body to kill the virus 
there is one medication which is under trial right now which is showing a promise it is called as ribavirin ribavirin is showing it is an antiviral drug and it is showing promising results but still this is not something which is a sure shot treatment so it is very difficult to treat this virus and this virus is showing serious conditions especially the state of kerala nowadays and you might have heard that even healthcare professionals are getting infected by just treating the patients of these conditions and a nurse just lost her life in recently a few days back it's not something to get panicky about it's something to understand so i suggest you to follow proper hygiene principles in the way we should and avoid any kind of exposure to somebody who does not feel ill and we have to understand if the virus is in south india it needs a person to carry it from south india to north india or somewhere otherwise so a pig or a bat will not just come from that side to here and spread the virus so all you need to know about is the basic mechanism of this virus so next video i am going to put up about the how a virus actually works and how our body attacks the virus any virus there is a single mechanism to actually a simplified way there is a simple mechanism by which a body there is a very complex mechanism by which our body actually removes these viruses from our cells and how these viruses any virus damages your cells you need to understand that so don't forget to subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon because that's how you will get the notification about the next coming video so i hope some information about this virus has been cleared out here you don't have to avoid all types of fruits you don't have to avoid contact with all people all you need to do is make sure keep an eye if somebody is coughing somebody is sneezing then don't come in very close contact with that person and make sure you follow your hygiene wash your hands regularly it's not that if you eat a pig it will actually lead to these infections it's not like this but you have to make sure you're not eating something which is from an unhygienic place so the infection can spread by many ways so that's why you have to be extra cautious the best possible preventive measure is proper hygiene that's the best you can do you can maintain your own hygiene your family's hygiene especially hygiene while eating food so good luck handling this infection i hope this video was helpful till next time stay connected stay healthy